It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, take a look around St. John's, rehearsing pageants and singing songs, and add the wreaths with candles all aglow. It's as far as I got. <laughs> but it is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> All four candles are lighted on the advent wreath. I've seen poinsettias arriving in the Ladahawk room. The Christmas crash is over on the altar in the healing chapel waiting for its inhabitants. After mass, we'll put the Christmas tree behind the altar and decorate it. If advent calendars are part of your observance, you've noticed almost all the windows are open and Christmas cards are starting to accumulate Surprises come out of nowhere, children and relatives coming home for the holidays, and it's 55 degrees and raining in Portland. It is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And the church, who in these previous Sundays of Advent has held before us the final judgment of the last great day, the message of the prophets, and the ministry of John the Baptist, switches gears today and has us focus on that gospel story of the Annunciation to Mary. The angel Gabriel announces to her that she will conceive and bear the Son of God. Now, our Protestant brothers and sisters have had a, a long time difficulty in really dealing with Mary. They don't really know quite what to do with her. Uh, it's a little uncomfortable, and a lot of that comes from the abuses in Marian devotion, especially at the time of the Reformation. But Anglican Christians, Episcopalians, along with Roman Catholics and Orthodox, have a great admiration, veneration, and love for the Blessed Virgin. We see her as being at the heart of the Christian experience because she is at the heart of the Incarnation. God chose to become a human being in that young Jewish girl's womb. We celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation on March the 25th, nine months to the day before Christmas. Think about it. And on that day, we give thanks for Mary's special role in salvation. But today, when we hear that Annunciation Gospel, it's in a slightly different context. Of course, we acknowledge that the Annunciation was to Mary, it was 2,000 years ago in Nazareth. But we are in Advent, that time that is bifocal. In other words, we are asked to direct our gaze in two different directions at the same time, not a small feat. We look back to those events leading up to God's incarnation accomplished in Jesus' birth at Bethlehem. But at the same time, we look forward to Christ's second coming and power and great glory at the end of all time. We celebrate the coming of God's realm on earth in that holy birth long ago. And at the same time, we prepare ourselves for the coming of God's realm on earth in the foreseeable future. So we live in this, what I love to call the already, but not yet. And in that context, the Annunciation takes on a, a deeper aspect. We can't just be satisfied at singing the praises of Jesus' most holy mother and leave it at that. We must be bold enough to become his mother ourselves. The Orthodox have long referred to Mary as Theotokos, God-bearer. And we are called to be no less. Now, true, the Word became flesh in Jesus of Nazareth. But God wants to be born in each and every one of our hearts. 
you know, a lot of people in society yell out about this time of year, let's, let's put Christ back in Christmas. But God yells out, let me put my eternal word in the womb of your heart, and it will be Christmas every day of the year. So what if you say, yes, yes, that's what I want this Christmas. I want to give birth to God. But how? How, how does that happen? Well, if you're serious about that, then you must begin by hearing the words of God's messenger, the angel, and believing them. Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. How many times do we have to be told that before we actually believe it? God loves you. You, you are precious in God's eyes. Perhaps part of us is afraid to believe it, and that's okay, because our gospel told us that Mary was greatly perplexed at that very greeting, but she didn't hold on to that fear. And we too can let go of it, because we are favored by God, we are loved. But you might come back, no, 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 not me. All those people sitting around me, maybe they're favored by God, but God knows who I really am, and it's not the person you think you see on Sunday mornings. I mean, I come to church, I'm somewhat involved, but I'm not even sure what this relationship with Jesus Christ stuff is all about. And I don't even think I know how to pray, so how can I conceive in my deepest heart the Son of God? And the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And that's how it will happen. But no, 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 you said, no, no, you don't know me. I'm not like all those other people who call themselves Christians. God doesn't come to me that way. Let's just face it, I'm not a likely candidate for what they are talking. And you know what I say to that? I do have a rebuttal. <laughs> Mary was the likely candidate. An unmarried, pregnant, Jewish, teenage girl in the Middle East is the likely candidate to be someone whom all generations will call blessed. Hmm. And think about her cousin, Elizabeth. In her old age, she gives birth she who had been called barren. You see, God doesn't need to hear you say, I'm too young, or I'm too old, or I don't have enough faith, or I do, but I'm too shy. God has heard all of that before. And the divine response is always the same. I love you. You are special to me. And I want to be born in you. You may be 98 years old or 19 years old and spiritually barren your whole life, but God can come to birth in the womb of your heart in an instant, for nothing will be impossible with God. We extol Mary as the Queen of Saints because she most clearly shows us what it is to be a saint. She gives us the, the refrain, the answer to this whole love affair with God. When she says, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That is the prayer that the church leaves us with on this fourth and final Sunday of Advent as we prepare to go kneel at the Christmas prayer. What would happen if we make that prayer of Mary's our own? Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. What would happen if we, like Mary, were willing to become
become Theotokos, God bearer. Well, if the experience was anything like hers, we would probably feel great joy at seeing the Word of God come forth from us. We might be surprised by strange gifts from strange people who come into our lives because of what we've given birth to. We might lose the Christ and search frantically for Him before discovering Him again. Perhaps we'll witness others flocking after that which has been born in us and then again seeing them turn away and reject it. We might have to watch what has become our joy, our hope, and our life suffer and die. But if we do, we will see it raised to new eternal life. We will see Christ as the day spring on, on, from on high who raises us up and overshadows us with his Holy Spirit. Implanting in us his eternal love in the womb of our hearts. And then we will know that it is indeed beginning to look a lot 